country's private sector activity recorded a 15-month low in July, and that's owing to a decline in new orders and also muted business confidence. Now, according to Stanbix Bank's survey, the purchasing manager's index remained below the 50-point no-change mark for the fourth successive month, falling to 46.3 from 46.8 in June. Now, the survey on performance in the manufacturing sector reveals a decline in new orders during the month. Companies basically have been forced to scale back their purchasing. The survey also notes that inflation rates remained elevated at the start of the third quarter, and that's despite softening over the month. Now, the cost of purchasing goods also rose at one of the sharpest rates on record in the month, and that is due to higher in fuel prices, which have had an impact on transportation costs. On a positive, positive note, employment levels in the private sector did rise, ending a two-month sequence of declines. Well, let's now get some more insight into these numbers. We're joined by Anthony Mveyange, an executive director at the Partnership for African Social and Governance Research. Great to have you on the show with us uh, today, sir. Now, of course, this will be the fourth uh, consecutive month uh, of falling uh, private sector activity in the country and the steepest uh, since April. So what are your thoughts? Is it solely uncertainty around uh, the upcoming election uh, behind this? Or it, when we look at the wider economic picture, could it be those inflationary pressures? Thank you very much for having me tonight. I think it's both. It's both the uncertainty around uh, upcoming election and also the wider picture, uh, the inflationary pressure that the country and largely many countries in the continent are facing. The inflationary pressure is putting pressure on uh, domestic demand, which actually, as we all know, with inflationary pressure, lower, there is lower domestic demand. And with lower domestic demand, companies and businesses tend to have low cash flow. Uh, and this can actually affect production and productivity across uh, different sectors in the economy. I think what is most important is the increase in input prices. This has been persistent in affecting Kenyan economy. Over the last few months, uh, especially after the uh, Russia and Ukrainian war, we have seen persistent increase in fuel prices, in fertilizers, in wheat and other food imports. We have seen persistent uh, uh, supply shortages that the, the country has been facing, particularly uh, in some key sectors. So this definitely will affect businesses going forward. And it's not surprising to see that the PMI is showing a, a, a lower index record. And of course, as, as you mentioned, uncertainty around upcoming elections, security issues, you know, pressing demand, uh, changing preferences because things uh, for expectations about the future would all in general affect uh, the performance and, uh, as reported by PMI. Mm. Well, it is interesting, uh, as you said, even though these businesses are being forced to pretty much scale back, uh, we are seeing employment activity in the private sector uh, improving. What are your thoughts on why this uh, could be the case? Yes, I mean, that's quite interesting. And I think for Kenya, we can attribute this to uh, three key areas. One would be the tourism, hospitality and tourism sector. If you look at the recently released economic survey for Kenya 2022, we, we see uh, statistics show that uh, Kenyans' uh, international arrival visitors have increased from 50.3 to 87.1 percent. And with that, of course, we know uh, uh, things like travel, co travel restrictions have been uplifted. We have seen COVID vaccines uptake has, has, uh, has increased. And all of these have, uh, has, um, has contributed to the uh, new traffic flow and, and good performance of the tourism sector in Kenya. So, we, we, seeing a positive turnaround in some of these sectors is not surprising. The second is also increasing fintech activities, financial sector activities here, uh, improvements in mobile money, improvement in mobile banking, you know, uh, uh, um, and other innovations that are happening in the financial sector could also be attributed to the new turnaround. And finally, uh, the last element, uh, KEPSA, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, recently released a survey on, on CEO's business confidence index in the, in the country. And compared to the other election periods, 2017 and 2012, uh, this year's election, there's a very positive confidence in CEO's businesses in the, con in, in, the, in the country. And particularly in key sectors, as mentioned before, hospitality and tourism seems to be taking the top. 
uh, position and also building and construction also in retail. So with this confidence, we should be expecting that to see some changes in some of the key sectors. So uh, the, the positive trend you are describing is not necessarily surprising. Mm. Well, what are your thoughts on where this trend is going to go? Because we know businesses, investors, they're all bracing uh, for next week's general election, one which is expected uh, to be quite a tight race. What is your outlook uh, for business activity, especially looking at the two front runners and, of course, their plans for the economy going forward? Well, well, uh, under normal circumstances, we know that when there's general election, people tend to be very... Uh, um, careful and uh, risk averse. So we should expect to see business activities to slow down a bit, uh, investors leaving the country, because we have seen that uh, there's a history of uh, violence during elections, not only in Kenya and many other countries. So in terms of business activities, we should expect some slow down a little bit. But what does it mean for the uh, uh, future of the country ahead of the election? I think uh, we should also have, given that there's also confidence, very high confidence relative to the other elections, we should expect business to be booming after the election, maybe six months into the, into the, uh, into the election, after the new government is settled in. Uh, but what is important is to make sure that the country is stable, so political stability will be a key predictor of how business activity will be going going forward. Expectation on economic growth and business growth is also very key. How the government is going to tackle challenges related with especially external pressures, Ukraine war, higher prices, inflationary pressure is very, very key. So these are, will be the key drivers to the extent to which business activity will pick up first in Kenya post the election. Mm. Well, we're certainly watching. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for those great insights. That, of course, is Anthony Mveyange, an executive direct director at the Partnership for African Social and Governance Research. Joining us there.